Tim, are there necessary steps towards enlightenment or awareness? And if once one's attained that state, is it possible then to lose it or drop back down again? Enlightenment and awareness are uh, two different things. Enlightenment happens within the field of awareness, which is everywhere. Buddhist thinking, teaching, is that enlightenment, to have an enlightenment, a number of different causes and conditions have to reach fulfillment. And then the enlightenment experience takes place. It has a beginning and an end. For the noble Buddha, sitting under the tree, after he performed all kinds of different rituals and meditations and fasted, gathering all different kinds of what he described as karmic um, merit, and developing all kinds of different virtues and generating all kinds of different energies one fine day it all came together and created the ultimate experience that this body mind spirit matrix can have an enlightenment experience in that experience he saw his past lives he saw the hell and the heaven realms he saw the nature of reality and was uh, blessed by incredible light. After that he sat for three weeks looking at the Bodhi tree without blinking. So that was a very intense month or so for him. Awareness is different. So we could say of enlightenment it's a little bit like an orgasm, a sexual orgasm. In order to have a really good orgasm, certain energies have to be present. You have to have a focus, you have to build up some energy, and if it reaches a critical point, then something happens. My understanding of enlightenment is a bit like that. So, then awareness is different, because nothing generates awareness. The self isn't made of anything. It doesn't ever change. The psychological self, who we thought we were, that's constantly changing and completely governed and run by causes and conditions. But the true self, it doesn't emerge, it doesn't come, it doesn't go. It's an all our chaos of identifying with the psychological self happens within the true self. There's no boundary or edge to the true self, neither is there a centre to the true self. So, having it, you can you can put everything down and see what is there, and then you can pick everything up again. If you pick stuff up, it will obscure your vision of what is there when you put stuff down. But after a certain point. You become established as the self. At what point is that? Well, it's not really a process. It's not really a process. It seems like a process. And from a certain perspective, it appears as if it's a process. But it actually isn't because you already are it. But basically, for practical or practical reasons, the more we sit in pure presence, the more pure presence unfolds for us and the psychological self it starts to dissolve it starts to shift we move out of it we don't depend on it we see it for what it is we recognize that our suffering came because we were thought based because we were living in a mentally based reality and that awareness calls us into being calls us into does that mean we see suffering even though awful things continue to happen to us is there not a point at which those awful things actually stop happening? Yeah, because the thing is this, that awful things happen, you label them as awful. And 
There is no inher there is no inherently awful, awful things. Really? Really. All things are inherently empty. So two the same thing may happen to two different people and they would get it differently. There is no thing that everybody gets the same except awareness. So what happens is you might have awful things happen, so-called, you know, your house might burn down, you might stub your toe, whatever. But who you're being in the experiencing of that, that is what transforms. Suffering doesn't come out of what happens, it comes out of what we make of it. Suffering doesn't come out of pain, suffering comes out of how we deal with the pain. So we start to, by becoming awareness, recognising that we are awareness, by becoming the self, moving out of the psychological self, suffering diminishes. And once we've become that self, we can't then backslide to where we've... You where can't we backslide because you were it in the first place. You were always it. it you were, there was never a moment, and there is never going to be a moment, where you're not who you are. Yeah, but could you lose your awareness of it again? Well, you do when you sleep, don't you? Well, every night very much, but yeah. yeah your consciousness <clears throat> disappears back into the cave of your heart <clears throat> you lose all recognition of i you lose all recognition of and remembrance of your story of your drama and then in the morning it unfolds again and you recall the self and you recall yourself as the self and it all it always is there again so it comes and goes but awareness doesn't. Consciousness comes and goes and fluctuates. Awareness doesn't. If when you were in a deep, dreamless sleep, I put your hand in warm water, what would you do? Not much. You'd pee yourself. Would you? Yeah. Well, I'll try if you like. <laughs> <laughs> You'd pee yourself. Why? You weren't conscious of having your hand put in the water. You wouldn't consciously be yourself. But you were aware of it. So something was aware of the change in your, on the surface of your hand. It sent messages and created the result of you peeing. Because it didn't go via your consciousness. It was just pure awareness. But that awareness is there all the time. The universe is built in a great throbbing awareness, which makes everything happen. Whose awareness is that that it's built in? It's not anybody's. Nobody at all? Everybody's in the awareness. Not even God's? Everybody, God and everybody else is in awareness. The notion so of God's God... God's in it, he's not it, he's in it. Well, because awareness pervades, you know, if there's God, then there must be a place where there isn't God. So all, all possibility exists within awareness. And all possibility exists because of awareness. But awareness itself is untouched by any of it. Yet it pervades all of it, like in a dream. Like when you dream in, a, in your sleep, the objects that you dream of in your sleep appear to be very real when you're dreaming. But in actual fact, as soon as you wake up, you realise they have no substance at all. And the, and the dreamer, when he wakes up, it, the dream had no effect on him whatsoever. Does your past have no substance at all? Well, where is it? Where is my past? Somewhere locked in my head. No. Go and try and find it. Go and try and find... The, the one that's wounded by the past. Actually, go and, instead of running from it, which is our tendency, go and try and find it. See if you can find it. If, if the past, go and try and find it. And you'll find that if you actually turn around and go and look for it, you, what it the embodiment of your fear, go and try and find that one. So you're saying the past has no power whatsoever over you? I'm saying if who your being is, that you're the character you play... If how you're identifying with yourself is that you're the character that's had that past, then you're going to be taking a lot of energy bringing that past with you in every moment. And then, of course, it affects who you are thinking that you are. 
Does it affect the self if you do that? No. But you're not, you're not identifying as the self. You're identifying as...